The structure of my intervention, which will be followed by an intervention by Duncan, that complements and expands on mine, um, is going to be to introduce Lines of Empathy, which is a project and exhibition at the first book before becoming an exhibition. And, um, and first I'll give you a brief overview of my practice and then I go into the details of, of Lines of Empathy, just so that you can contextualize a bit. So I, I describe myself as an artist working within the realm of drawing, uh, handmade uh, drawing on paper, made primarily with pens. Um, I work around the grid and the right angle triangle, specifically I've been working with this language for now more than 20 years. It's, uh, it's, just, um, it's just the way things have developed from, uh, from the grid, I guess. Um, and um, so the drawings I make are quite small, um, made with, with pens, all handmade. Um, more recently I've also started using a brush, which has been a big change in my practice uh, because of the type of control is different. Um, and uh, I've been making various pieces with a brush uh, on a larger scale. And these have also been uh, affected by um, the kind of thing, the outcome, I guess, of a journey through making a larger scale commission work. Um, uh, in some instances, uh, in the medium of drawing, like this, uh, which is um, made with uh, again by hand, just using rulers and, and hand drawn with um, uh, with a, a paint marker. Uh, it's the pink drawing in the table. Um, and, uh, and also making other types of architectural large scale commissions with other materials, from bronze to vinyl, always interventions on the surface. So I make work which is very, very thin, and this is an important thing <coughs> that the material impact is small, but uh, trying to occupy space <laughs> in, a, in, in a large kind of it's not about making large stuff, but let's say try to uh, occupy space with, with very, very small um, mm -hmm. material means. And this for me has got a, it's a statement about um, how I see my place in the world generally, so from uh, you know, personality to environmental impact and, and so on. And also um, the fact that they are handmade, the pieces is, is, is connected. To the time, the amount of time I put into the work, and so the value that is associated to uh, to time. And now, uh, so I wasn't completely honest when I said that I'm not a curator. Uh, I have curated two divisions in my life. So uh, the first one uh, was in 2018, um, and it was called. Um, um, so in, in every slide you will find the caption at the bottom. I'm, I'm conscious it's not very big, but I hope you can see. So I won't go into all the details of the caption, but I hope that that's um, sufficient information for you. Um, so I'm, I'm, I work with a gallery called Barca Contemporary, which is based in uh, London, and they asked me as one of their artists if I might be interested in curating an exhibition. And uh, I enthusiastically accepted the proposal because it's something I've always been interested to do, but I never had the guts to initiate it by myself. Um, and so I, I, I was really excited to do the thing. And um, I'm really interested in fertility, as you might have gathered from the, the work I've shown. And so um, I brought together four artists um, uh, and worked in different media. So there was my work. Um, in the picture, you can see this is a print uh, which I made with rubber stamps, so it's triangle with a rubber stamp mark. Um, and then there was um, work on wood. This artist is called Sasha Holter. Uh, he makes um, shallow reliefs carved uh, by hand in wood. And then uh, there was the work of an artist called uh, David Murphy. You can see the piece is very small, unfortunately. Uh, and the other one, David Murphy, um, he's a sculptor and works across different media. These pieces are um, scratched on uh, a board, um, uh, it's a board, uh, a gesso board, where he scratches and reveals two different pigments. And then the fourth artist was um, um, 
sound messenger with the piece on the right is not very easy to see, but it's an artist that works solely on paper and uh, makes drawings uh, that are super intricate. And uh, those particular pieces from, from that body of work, um, they are to do also with, uh, with expo exposing the paper and the, and the artwork to the elements, so to eyes and water, and then uh, the marks created by uh, eyes, the unfolding pigment, leave uh, particular marks that are intersected with his own handmade marks. So it's really interesting work. So, uh, I I was very um, I was very satisfied with the exhibition because I felt that the work were really um, coming together and um, and uh, kind of th th it was a very haptic exhibition <laughs> and I felt it had a lot of potential and so I thought well considering that my specific interest is on uh, on um, on paper, actually, um, I can see how this could translate into a larger show just with uh, words on paper um, by various artists that I started and to have in mind. So I started to put together various pieces uh, by different artists that I, only some of them I knew in person, many were just artists that I I really admired and uh, that have been influential for me. And um, so I uh, I basically I was just called into a lot of work and then I also had a very young daughter. Um, I was spending a lot of time with so I kind of got to the time of the pandemic, uh, so exactly three years ago, where I hadn't really um, done anything about that possible follow-up exhibition and also in the meantime the gallery that represented me had moved into a much smaller space so it wasn't really a conversation I could have with them, it couldn't be a follow-up within their own privacy. So uh, anyway, so I found myself in, in the solitude of freelancers, so I kind of lost all of my work and I was homeschooling uh, and so on. And so I, I tried to um, I tried to uh, think about projects that I was interested in, that could keep me motivated since I didn't have a specific deadline for anything, as everything had vanished all of a sudden. And so this project of the exhibition uh, um, came up um, again as a, posi as a possibility, as something that I could focus and channel my, my energy and my focus and a little bit of time I could find when I was not um, absorbed in uh, child activities. And um, and so uh, I started um, thinking that obviously uh, a real show in person wasn't going to happen, and that prompted because it was impossible to do uh, real life events, but also it was actually quite impossible to even plan something in the future because all the problems with every venue were being postponed indefinitely and so on. And so that gave me uh, the prompt for. Um, trying to focus on um, why had I been interested in all those pieces and why, how they connected with each other. So I had maybe a dozen or so of artworks. Uh, so I wasn't thinking just about specific artists, but I actually had picked specific pieces that I would like to bring together. So I was really thinking about the show in a very concrete manner. And, um, and I started to contact all the, the various artists and um, with the pretext of that, well, it could be an exhibition, but I wasn't quite sure what it could be. So it was really gate crashing in many instances. And the amazing thing is that because people were at home rolling their thumbs, basically everyone replied. That was just amazing. People that probably would have not even had the time to reply in normal circumstances. So the, the difficult situation actually played in my favor. And uh, I started having conversations with these artists, like sort of uh, Zoom uh, studio visits, like I'm sure that lots and lots of artists would have done uh, at that time. And um, and then I, I set myself the task to, to really um, clarify to myself uh, why I was putting together all these particular pieces and what I was trying to get to. And um, that slowly <laughs> crystallized into a set of questions which took a good part of the year to formalize the questions that I could address to the artists in writing and actually get 
practical, uh, very concrete information about each of the pieces that I would bring in together in this sort of imaginary curatorial uh, project. So uh, it really be, be, be became all about the questions. Um, and so each artist, um, starting from a specific point from which I kind of worked out my parameters and I wanted to get to, each of the artists was given the questions in writing and they committed to answering within a certain time scale. So this, uh, the process of answering the questions occurred from, say, mid-2021 uh, and uh, very early, right? And yeah, 2021 and the summer of uh, 22, so it's about a year and a bit. And, um, uh, and, and so it basically became uh, a book. So it was clear at that point it was going to be a book. I mean, I wasn't ruling out the education, but that came later. So, um, now, basically, you will see that these questions um, are very, very dense, and they are all about asking of the tools and the surface and the space in which the piece has been created and the, the time it's taken to make the piece. So, basically, they get to those key questions about uh, what that makes drawing, the key elements that really make drawing. Um, so, I am going to. I, does anybody want to um, keep this slide for a little bit longer, or should I move to the next? Um, now we also have a copy of the book here that uh, can circulate exactly, so that you can uh, because it's, it's actually a physical, a physical book. So um, yeah, I, I will have to be quite brief about every detail because it's actually quite the quite a, a complex uh, project, but um, I wanted to explain the few key things that have informed the book and it's why the framework, let's say. So the, the title um, not only was it was connecting to um, the previous exhibition, Tactile Lines, but uh, specifically, so it was continuing with the idea of line as a key um, aspect of drawing, when you think of drawing, you First thing that comes to mind it is a line. Um, and then the, the element of empathy, um, something that um, had uh, come to, to me from a collaboration I had done just before the pandemic with a neuroscientist at the uh, Welcome Center for Human Neuroimaging at UCL. And I've been uh, very fortunate to collaborate with this neuroscientist and create a piece of response to her work. Uh, which now hangs there in the Welcome Center for uh, uh, Human Neuroimaging. And so uh, the, this collaboration had really opened up a, a whole world <laughs> to me because I didn't know anything about neuroscience and uh, it was amazing and I'm still learning a lot from, from that and I've kind of developed a sensibility which um, would not be possible thanks to this collaboration. And um, so the, the idea I developed um, is that um, the artworks in the book are uh, seen as vehicles for the, the experiences and the emotions and the world view, the point of view of other people, which are the artists. And something that, so the, the viewer uh, in front of these pieces can experience um, can experience or have a feeling for what the artist has experienced. And, uh, and the fact that they are made by hand on paper um, is, is crucial to this. Um, in fact, uh, in, in an analogy that I use in the introduction to the book is that of the seismograph. So I see these pieces uh, connected to what the seismograph does, uh, they picking up vibrations and um, and transmitting them, and it's, it's a very tactile process uh, and, and very holistic in, in many ways. Um, so, uh, now going a little bit more in, in, uh, in depth with um, why the particular choice of artists, which, unless you have scrolled through the book, actually, you <laughs> don't know who they are. So, um, now you would have seen already my work, um, now a little bit more of that. So, uh, all the pieces in the book, they have in common um, abstraction, 
a certain type of abstraction, uh, repetitive, and uh, in, in some ways geometric work, with certain um, um, there, are, there are commonalities. Um, and um, I do, uh, I do actually want to make a point in this book about the fact that uh, abstraction is, uh, although it's not a particularly fashionable uh, area at the moment. Uh, but it's a meaningful language that is, uh, can be connected to narratives and, and, uh, and identity as much as figurative work. And so it's time to kind of <laughs> break a bit the boundaries between these two, uh, with this distinction, I suppose, uh, kind of um, no very helpful distinction of abstraction and figuration. And then um, uh, uh, another thing that they have in common all these pieces is the sense of process. Um, in fact, I think the question about time, how long it took to make the piece, is probably one of those that at least that maybe it's one of the most interesting answers. I mean, they're all really interesting in the interviews, but I must say time um, really uh, it was, it was quite a big, um, <coughs> it just got a big important role in, uh, in this book. And then um, the other aspect uh, that um, Runs through all pieces is tactility, and uh, and this is um, something that maybe now we take a little bit for granted. But at that particular moment during the pandemic, tactility was a, a very hot topic. Something that um, had created a lot of trauma for a lot of people, and um, and so it, it was it felt very relevant to, to talk about that. Um, and. That in turn has got the connection also to how where the abstraction, the type of abstraction I use comes from. It comes from my heritage. I'm originally from Italy near Ravenna, where there are lots of Byzantine mosaics, and that's how this is a, a Roman mosaic, it's also part of the local heritage. Um, and that's where uh, my idea of, of a certain type of geometric abstraction uh, is very tactile and related to architecture comes from. Um, then there is uh, one uh, other layer that I will mention uh, in terms of the wider framework of uh, lines of empathy, um, which is also rooted in my own heritage. Um, so the book is basically a thought as a self-portrait, and um, the, the reference um, the reference for, for this is a book I had read when I was a student in the 90s in Italy, which is called Autoritrasco, which has just been translated and issued uh, less than two years ago in the, in the English speaking world, a self portrait. And uh, I don't know if anyone is familiar with this uh, book or this author. Um, the author, Carla Lodi, she was a very important art critic uh, in Italy in the 50s and 60s. And then she moved on to feminism as she became a militant feminist. And, um, and the book is kind of, this is her last book in the art world, so to speak. And it was a book uh, like no other at the time. Uh, basically, it was a book which um, was gathering the words of all the artists that were part of her milieu, uh, of her environment. And um, she interviewed them uh, orally, not. Uh, in Marti, like me, and then she had done a collage of all these conversations so that she had uh, put their words at the center. And, uh, and this is something that was uh, a way to show how critical she was, how Cavalon was for the art establishment, which was really uh, patriarchal and top down. And, um, and when I discovered Cavalon, they really um, connected to her because. Uh, of the environment I've grown up with, which was equally patriarchal, and, uh, and also I, I also felt uh, as a student in Italy that artists weren't given so much the uh, possibility of speaking for themselves, and there was this figure of the curator talking for them. So, um, so um, then my collection of interviews um, is basically a self portrait as a, in the form of acknowledging who has influenced me over the course of the two decades and a bit of the income. So I settled here in 2004, but I had been here previously in different capacity, opener, and then as a student scholarship, and then gradually I decided to make it my home. So I guess also the isolation caused by the pandemic and then 
the formalization of Brexit and the borders and everything. So it's all come together. It's a book which is the product of a particular um, period of my practice and uh, I guess phase of my life, mid middle age starting and probably already <laughs> well into my middle age and so on. So uh, I hope that this gives you a bit of an overview and uh, yes, and we'll to get the chance to see the, the book. Now I'm just going to very, very quickly show you all the 16 pieces of work that are the subject of the interviews in the book. And uh, so these pieces have been um, shown uh, in the homonymous uh, Exhibition Plans of Empathy at Patrick Kaide, at Contemporary Art in London, uh, and the show is traveling to close at TD in Somerset, opening on the 3rd of June. You invite them, you have to be around there in the afternoon, and then it will be open until the 22nd of July. Um, so somehow things have gone full circle from an ideal exhibition actually being able to do the exhibition again. So again, I will uh, point you to the to the caption, so you can get an idea of the medium and the name of the artist. Uh, this artist called Lucinda Burgess. Uh, so I should also specify that the order in which the images, uh, so all the pieces are always presented in the same order when I do a presentation like this or in the book. And um, it's a sort of curated order that I came up with as I started putting things together. Uh, so there are connections that move from one piece to the next, but it could be something else and I imagine that a reader would probably make different connections, this is just been um, my sensitivity. So they're not in alphabetical order or there isn't any hierarchy. In fact, something that for me was very important was that each artist should have the same visibility as any other artist in, in general and the same kind of... Um, so that it's, 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 yeah, no hierarchy was very important. This artist is David Murphy, is actually the only artist that was from the previous exhibition. Um, he also works on paper. And then Kate Perry. And all the pieces are on paper. And me. Mary Griffith. That is an artist paper in Manchester. Peter Perry. Is based in London. And so I met the work of these artists throughout the well, span of 25 years. And uh, some of them I've also met them in person, like Diamond, in the exhibition we were together. Others I just mm. gave crash and contact with them out of the blue and everyone was so kind with me and I'm hugely thankful for that. Faye Ballard. Diamond, of which uh, uh, are food. His work will be here more very soon. Carol McCombe. Simon Hitchens. Anna Mossman. Anna Kass. Richard Duckhouse. Friend of yours, Honorable Cold Lord, and my husband, and finally, you need to talk to us. Okay, so um, these are just the days of the upcoming show. We should be able to do again an artist conversation. We still don't know. How many of the artists are able to be there? But we did the conversation with uh, about eight of the artists at the end of the show at Patrick Hyde, and it was really, really nice. Um, so, in case you are able to join, you are in most welcome. So, this will be on June the 3rd, it's a Saturday afternoon from 2 to uh, 5. Thank you. So, here are a few more information. So, I do have a dedicated account on the of Empathy, while I run my work. And there's one more person about my work if you'd like to find out more. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.